yes, it's a big number. Five trillion dollars, and I would ask you to answer the question whether you want to pay or not to pay for the future of transportation. Let's imagine a beautiful city somewhere in the world where you can ride any taxi, any train, any bus, and any bike for, or with just a simple application, where all vehicles are shared to make traffic flow, where all vehicles are electric to give us air to breathe. A city where you can call a robo-taxi anytime, and it takes you anywhere without any delays and for just a few cents per mile. A city where people happily give up their personal cars because they can save a lot of money. A city where parking lots turn into parks with many ways for us for walking and for biking. This is a place where I would want to live and work and raise my kids, and uh, I think maybe some of you too. So allow me to take you on a little journey on how we can make this magical future of mobility reality. But let's begin with what innovation in transportation looked like about 35 years ago. For the younger folks among you, uh, this is KIT, uh, a state-of-the-art autonomous car with a real cool personality powered by artificial intelligence. And you could actually call KIT with your watch, with your smartwatch. KIT, where are you? And KIT would turbo boost over fences and rescue David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Growing up in Germany, I loved the show, and uh, I loved it so much that uh, David Hasselhoff and the smart car actually taught me English. And um, <laughs> I loved it so much that I even moved to Detroit, of all places, but to this day, nobody has built one of those beautiful cars for me yet. But uh, all of us kind of, for, for us, the transportation systems here are somewhat of a uh, arteries. You know? It's like when uh, the system is working properly, a community is likely to thrive and prosper. But system breakdowns or blockages can quickly lead to quality of life issues, like never-ending traffic jams or suffocating pollution. These problems can quickly put a vibrant community into cardiac arrest. But all of us could make a fundamental difference, a big difference, with just a little change. After digging through hundreds and hundreds of studies and uh, modeling about uh, 450 effects um, of how innovation in transportation impacts our economy, I came to conclude that a simple 12 cents per vehicle mile could make 1.7 billion people mobile in this world. And the good news for us is this evolution of transportation is actually ex accelerating. But we in Detroit, for us, winter is coming. <laughs> um, and uh, if we do not change, we actually may become extinct. Um, the evolution of ground transportation. Over the last 100 years, many inventions in personal and public transportation have given our societies a lot, a lot of prosperity. Today, a lot of uh, these innovations are stacking up to create unexpected exponential changes, like connected vehicles driving on connected roads or artificial intelligence driving our very vehicles. And exactly as Ray Kurzweil projected in 2006, these exponential innovations are calling for exponential Exponential changes are calling for exponential innovation. <laughs> so what is this next big thing? Well, this one is a beautiful car, isn't it? It should be, because it is the second largest item on our budgets. And it has some very dirty little secrets. Today, we use our very expensive cars only 4%, barely 4%, actually, of the time. We drive alone 70% in vehicles that are designed for five to seven people. And this is why 94% of weight is moved around that is empty. 
We are wasting a lot of fuel, only 6% as passengers. In range anxiety, many of us have range anxiety, but 92% of trips are less than 60 miles. And 86% of time, our powerful turbo-boosted engines drive no faster than 35 miles per hour. And now add autonomous technology to this. You will find more vehicles on our roads that are driving empty. So much waste for so little happiness. And the next big thing is very, very small. Ultra small vehicles that are electric, autonomous, that are delivered as a shared service and sometimes even for free. And we urgently need innovations like this because our fast growing cities are drowning in traffic. And today, we drive 90% of surface miles with our oversized, underutilized, and highly inefficient vehicles. You may say, well, we can afford it, but let me show you how much money we actually pay for all of this waste. $5.6 trillion. That's a lot of money. And only half of it is what we owners pay directly. We, as society, pay indirectly another two and a half trillion, and that is societal cost we pay indirectly. $10,000 for every vehicle on our road for pollution, poisonous pollution that is killing more people than crashes, and for wasting 110 hours in traffic, in front of traffic lights, or looking for parking. And our lives are short. Time is the only thing nobody can give us back. And only 1% of this mountain of money we pay to provide public transportation for over 100 million people in our country. But our public transportation system, as you can see here, is also highly inefficient. Our buses are crawling through traffic. In average, they transport about 10 passengers in vehicles that can carry 78. So again, it's about 94% of empty weight, equal to cars, but they waste a lot more fuel because you have to move 14 tons at a measly four miles per gallon. And the bottom line, we passengers only pay about 25% of what it costs to provide bus services here in the United States. 75% is subsidies paid by our tax dollars. So it is time for true microtransit. One bus can be replaced by 24 of these ultra small vehicles that can provide more service, much more fl uh, flexibility, but also at a fraction of the cost. And disruption is on the way. Google owns the patent for free rights meaning they are taking their online business model to the road. Businesses would pay Google to provide free customer rights to their brick and mortar stores. It is not hard to imagine what free rights would do to other transportation providers, but also to congestion on our roads. This brings up two important questions. Why do we make people pay for public transportation? We subsidize most of it anyways. And what do we road users actually get for free? Not much. 65% of our roads are in poor or fair condition. And over 65,000 bridges are dysfunctional. It's actually dangerous to cross them. And the infrastructure business in the United States, not a good business. Our assets, roads, and bridges are worth about $84 trillion. All of us here in this room and many people elsewhere are paying about $300 billion for tolls, for licensing, for fuel tax, and also tickets, unfortunately. Um, and this translates into a whopping 0.4% return on assets. And now let's assume for a moment that $300 billion is depreciation. We are sweating our assets for over 250 years. This is why spotting and swerving around potholes has become part of our daily commutes. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Why don't we all pay a few cents, just a few cents per vehicle mile to invest into our ailing transportation system? And why 
don't we make public transportation for free? It would certainly get some people off our very congested roads. But as we have just established for our roads and bridges, free is maybe not the best way forward. A fair price should reflect the true cost each mode of transportation creates for our society. And a smart price would actually do much more. It would dynamically drive the right behaviors to better balance supply and demand of our public transportation system and our roads. So it would factor in the time of day we elect to drive, whether we drive alone or share a ride with others. The weight of our vehicle, the emissions, the fuel economy, but also the level of congestion and the speed we are allowed to drive at and, and the quality of the road or the condition of the road we are driving on. And what is a fair price? According to my model, it is just 12 cents per vehicle mile of every truck and every car that could buy us the future of our transportation system. 12 cents is just a fraction of the 80 cents or $10,000 we all pay anyways indirectly in societal cost for our broken and inefficient transportation system. And 12 cents is just 5% of the price range that we have accepted over the last 10 years for a gallon of fuel. We paid between $1.60 and two, sorry, in $4.10, that's $2.50 price range. In 12 cents, buy us 1.9 trillion we can invest over the next five years to fix our broken roads and bridges, to build the intelligent infrastructure everybody has been talking about forever, to invest in a nationwide charging system, to invest in true transportation innovation like ultra-small vehicles, and even enough to fix our pitiful public transportation system. But to put all of this money to good use, we have to manage city transportation somewhat differently. Today, in most places here in the United States, obviously excluding Delaware, um, transportation is managed in silos. Different regions are managing their transportation systems independently. Even in one city, often agency by agency is managing different modes of transportation, often with very, very little collaboration. One possible solution, we make funding subject to collaboration across agencies and regions. This would align disjointed agencies behind one common goal, to manage all transportation options as one integrated multimodal system. And this is also an opportunity for us to actually create self-funding public-private partnerships. Progressive cities could put real estate, could, could put their assets, their road assets, their transportation assets in real estate investment trusts. This would allow financial markets to invest in these transportation assets, but also us to invest in transportation assets that are most important for our communities. Cities could, like their European counterparts, outsource the operation of transportation based on performance-based contracts. And enabled by ITS, by intelligent transportation systems, and funded by smart pricing, this would, in fact, create a self-funding system with very safe, invest very, very safe uh, returns on investment for investors. And this is how Mobility would become much more affordable. And mobility as a service would benefit especially zo those that at the moment cannot afford and probably will never afford to be able to own a car in Asia and Africa. But also 75 million people here in North America. It would give them access to health care, to education, and to jobs, and this has the potential to create 57 million new jobs around the world over the next 10 years. All of this to create much more GDP, and there's a, no, a lot of value at stake for us. Over the next 10 years, innovation in transportation can produce $5.1 trillion, the ticket, in economic value. 2.6 for society overall, and 2.5 for various industries. The biggest winners are fleet owners, 
They waste a lot less time in traffic, and they benefit from digital business models. Vehicle manufacturers will sell more fleet vehicles to mostly fast-growing cities and in emerging markets. And more fleet vehicles means more insurance premiums, and more technology on those vehicles will mean higher premiums, but will also mean that we have less crashes and less claims. Other obvious winners are providers of intelligent transportation systems, but the biggest winner of all is society. Less crashes, less injured, less people killed on our roads, and 250 billion hours less wasted in traffic. That is 140 million work years. You can do a lot of things with 140 million work years. And compared to this tremendous value, the losses of professional drivers, lawyers, or the healthcare industry, uh, but also the, the uh, rental car companies, are small, very small in comparison. And this tremendous value at stake is why we all should happily pay 12 cents per vehicle mile. The transportation systems of our cities will play a major role for where people will want to live and work in places they might not even consider to visit. So let's invest 12 cents per vehicle mile for the more affordable transportation in our country and for more sustainable mobility in our world. Thank you. Thank you.